Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today's video was inspired by an article that I saw online about someone's recent passing, and it reminded me of one of the most interesting equations that I've ever come across. So the old story goes that in the summer of 1950, several scientists were discussing extraterrestrial intelligence over lunch. Responding to the claim that intelligent life must be commonplace throughout the universe, a physicist at the table by the name of Enrico Fermi famously interjected, But where is everybody? In this conundrum, which later became known as the Fermi Paradox, Fermi called attention to the fact that a universe teeming with intelligence would likely be obvious to us. So it's a paradox because of the contradiction between the lack of clear and obvious evidence of extraterrestrial life and the seemingly high probability that such life, like ours, must exist in the vastness of the galaxy which contains billions of planets. But one man had an idea that could help answer this paradox. In 1961, American astronomer and astrophysicist Frank Drake proposed a probabilistic argument used to estimate the number of active communicative extraterrestrial civilizations in the Milky Way. And this argument later became known as the famous Drake Equation. You might also know Frank Drake's name because he was the director of the SETI Institute, and he helped Carl Sagan supervise the Golden Records Project that carried the human stories on the Voyager probes. Frank Drake passed away on September 2nd, 2022, at the age of 92. And so I thought, in honor of him, I would share his eponymous equation for those of you that haven't already seen it, because it's actually pretty interesting. Okay, so here's the equation. All right, good night, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure you hit that like button. What am I gonna do for dinner? Yeah, can I get um, two, no, three chicken tacos and a side of guac? Um, and do you guys do nachos? Just kidding. I'm not leaving you guys with that thing. That's ridiculous. But yes, that is the equation. And here is a super helpful graphic to help you interpret said equation. So the equation is n equals r star times fp times ne times fl times fi times fc times l. Now n is the product, which is what we're looking for. So n in this case stands for the number of civilizations with which humans can communicate with in our galaxy. Now the next part is r star, which is the average rate of formation of stars in the galaxy. And this parameter makes sense, right? If the rate of formation of stars is higher, meaning you have more stars, it would make sense that this would increase your likelihood of intelligent life. And the next part is fp. fp is the fraction of planets orbiting those stars. And this number and all of these fraction numbers, the ones that begin with f, will be between zero and one. If fp is zero, none of the stars have planets. If fp is one, all of the stars have planets. And if fp is 0.5, then half the stars have planets. You, you get the value of this number. The next part is ne, which is the number of planets per solar system with an environment suitable for life. So this is basically which planets are in the habitable zone and which aren't. Like in our solar system, Venus, not so much in the habitable zone. It's 800 degrees there all day, every day. So not so much. And so for our solar system, ne, equals one, just Earth. The next part is FL. FL is the fraction of planets where life actually appears at some point. And again, this number will be between zero and one. Zero, none of the planets supported life, and one, all of them supported life at some point. The next part is FI. FI is the fraction of planets with life on which intelligent life emerges, which again makes sense because we're not that excited about communicating with alien bacteria, or at least I'm not. And the second to last part is FC. FC is the fraction of civilizations that have developed a technology that releases detectable signs of their existence in space. And again, this is where Earth is just nailing it. We've sent probes outside of our solar system. We've got a space station hovering above us. SETI is over there like Gene Hackman in the conversation. I mean, we are just nailing it. But Drake wanted to factor in, was anybody else? And again, this number is going to be between zero and one. Zero, none of them can send us a message. One means all of them can. And L is the last part to take into consideration the time factor. 
L stands for the length of time that civilizations could release detectable signals into space. Because again, if the alien civilization could release detectable signs of their existence into space, but they did so a million years ago, that is not super helpful for us. Okay, so we got there. We know what all these letters mean, so what's N? What's the answer? What is the number of civilizations that we can communicate with? Well, spoilers? We don't exactly know. And it's for a very good reason. We don't have solid data points on at least three of these variables. There are three large uncertainties in the Drake equation. We know how many stars exist in the Milky Way, but we don't know how many of those stars have planets that could potentially harbor life, how often life might evolve into intelligent beings, and how long those civilizations would last before becoming extinct. So basically the last half of the Drake equation, we don't really have solid data for, and we can't really find the product N without that. But the point was to stimulate scientific conversation and debate about the factors to consider when searching for life outside of Earth, to begin to answer Fermi's paradox rather than just shrugging our shoulders and going, hmm. But Drake and his colleagues did actually put in their own reasonable estimates for the unknown values to begin to answer what the value for n could be. And this is what they came up with. They put the value of n as between 20 to 50 million. Bit of a range, but yes, according to their estimates, there could be as low as 20 civilizations with which we may communicate in our galaxy. But of course, these are only estimates, so they could be completely wrong. Other scientists have put in their own slightly more pessimistic values and gotten a value for n of nearly zero. But we do know that n cannot be exactly zero, because guess why? There is one planet that fits all the parameters in our galaxy, and we're all standing on it right now. And what I like about this equation is just how blatantly it winnows down what we're looking for. Are there stars? Great. Are there planets around those stars? Great. Are those planets in the habitable zone? Great. And so on. And when, if we are able to answer those questions, I think Drake's goal was always to begin to have a real conversation about this seeming paradox rather than just speculation. And what I appreciate about Drake is that for him, whether this panned out the way that he thought it would or not, the search was not pointless, even if it wasn't solved in his lifetime, because it answers a question that is more important than Mr. Fermi's, where is everybody? Are we alone? Frank Drake said, I like to explore and find out what things exist. And as far as I know, the most fascinating, interesting thing you could find in the universe is not another kind of star or galaxy, but another kind of life. Okay, that's it for the video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments below your thoughts on the Drake equation, or do you have an answer to the Fermi paradox? Should I get that third taco? <laughs> Actually, though, nachos do sound really good right now, so I've got my plans. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.